Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday Hump Day. We're glad you're along on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. September 9th. <laughs> month is moving along at a quick pace. Here we are. And now at 6 a.m., the latest on Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis, who is now free from jail, but has been given a new ultimatum by a federal judge. The latest on a deadly late night crash on I-75 in Rock Castle County. And what a former UK star will have to do to avoid jail time after pleading guilty in a theft case. Starting to see a few showers to the north and northwest. You can see that on first alert defender live radar. That is a precursor of what you can expect as we head throughout the afternoon and off into the evening hours. This isn't going to cause many issues right there, but today's forecast scatter showers and storms. We'll talk about the rainfall totals and also do you expect severe weather out of this? We'll have all that coming up. First on WKYT this morning, after spending six days in jail this morning, Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis is a free woman. Federal Judge David Bunning lifted the contempt of court charge against Davis, but not without putting a strict order in place. This morning, the question is, will Davis comply? WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk now with the very latest. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Barbara. Kim Davis will return to her office this week, but whether she will comply with the order that remains to be seen. U.S. District Judge David Bunning said he ordered Davis's release because her office has been issuing marriage licenses to straight and gay couples while she has been in jail. As part of Judge Bunning's order, he said Davis cannot interfere with her deputy clerks who are issuing those licenses now. From the beginning, Davis has asked that her name be removed from the marriage licenses. Well, that happened when she was jailed, so her clerks could start issuing those licenses. Now, instead of her name, the licenses just say Rowan County. If Davis interferes with her clerks who are issuing those marriage licenses now, she will be violating the court order and the judge said appropriate sanctions will be considered. When Davis walked out of the Carter County Detention Center yesterday afternoon, she was welcomed by hundreds of her supporters. The Rowan County clerk appeared to have a hard time speaking as she was overcome by emotion. Now, as Davis heads back to work this week, her attorneys are not saying whether she will comply with the order. However, they are saying she still will not do anything that violates her conscience. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. The Associated Press talked to Davis's mother, Jean Bailey, at yesterday's rally. Bailey spent 37 years as Rowan County clerk before her daughter was elected last year. She said if faced with the same decision on marriage licenses, she probably would have retired. But she said she supports her daughter's decision. Today, the focus will shift from the Carter County Jail back to Davis's Rowan County office in Moorhead. The Rowan County Judge Executive and one of the couples who had been trying to get a marriage license say it is time for the county to move on. They hope that Kim Davis follows the judge's order and allows her office to continue issuing marriage licenses. I'm hoping she does. I'd like to see, uh, not that y'all aren't nice to be around, but uh, I would like to see this thing over with and, and let's move forward. There's lots of things I'd like to be doing in this county besides uh, answering reporters every day. It's going to be kind of mixed feelings, you know. It's not going to be this happy memory that we have. It's going to be, we're going to look back and see that it was a struggle, but, you know, at least we, we fought for it and I think it's worth fighting for. WKYT will be in Rowan County this morning when the clerk's office opens. Of course, you can find extended coverage of the Kim Davis case on WKYT.com. New this morning, a Lexington teacher is in jail accused of sexually abusing a teenager. According to her arrest citation, 19-year-old Kayla Brown had sexual contact with a 14-year-old. Police say Brown was an intern at a school run by a Lexington church when the abuse happened. She'll be arraigned later today. This morning, investigators have identified a man who died in a crash in Rock Castle County. Last night's crash happened on I-75 southbound, just north of the Renfro Valley exit. The coroner says 33-year-old Kevin Savage of London died at the scene. State police say his car went off the road and overturned. Police say he was not wearing a seatbelt. New this morning, four women are in jail accused in an organized crime ring in Lexington. Police say the women were caught using forged credit cards at Fayette Mall. 
WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is live in Lexington now to explain what led to their arrest. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Barbara. Yeah, four women were arrested for being involved in an organized crime ring, as police say, right here in Lexington. These four women in their early 20s were arrested on 25 charges, including using a fraudulent credit card. Forged credit cards, that is. Court documents say the women used 22 counterfeit credit cards to buy more than $3,000 worth of merchandise at the Fayette Mall. That's where the women were caught and arrested yesterday. Now, according to the police citations, three of the women live in Florida, and the fourth, Mayeri Porto Zamora, lives right here in Nicholasville. The four women are set to be arraigned later today. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. 6.05 now on WKYT this morning. We're tracking a rather strange case out of Bath County this morning. Fish and wildlife officials are trying to track down an escaped monkey. State police tell us someone reported seeing the roaming monkey last night along Old State Road. The Primate Rescue Center in Nicholasville tells us that the monkey is a long-tailed macaque like the one you see here, and they believe it was likely someone's pet. They put out a humane trap to try and catch the monkey. Once it is caught, it will go to the Primate Rescue Center. A former UK basketball star has agreed to a plea deal in an Arizona theft case. Rex Chapman pleaded guilty to four counts of theft. And as part of the deal, the Herald Leader reports that Chapman will be sentenced to probation and 750 hours of community service. A year ago, Chapman stole more than $15,000 worth of items from an Apple store in Arizona and then sold the items for cash. It's going to be a huge event around here, and hundreds of workers and volunteers are preparing to welcome the thousands of people who will be coming to Lexington for next month's Breeders' Cup. Hospitality staff and volunteers got together last night at Keeneland to talk about their game plan. The Breeders' Cup is October 30th and 31st. It's the first time the event has been held at Keeneland. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and first alert defender. And we're looking on first load defender live radar with a couple of showers to the north and northwest, not really causing any issues, but nonetheless, you still are getting some rain out ahead of what we're seeing today. Now, the, the bulk of it really comes later on this afternoon. And in the afternoon and evening, we'll pick up anywhere from now through, I would say, tomorrow morning, early afternoon, about a half an inch to an inch and a half of rain. So you can see it's not extremely widespread. However, you are picking up at least some. Pretty decent rain there for the yards. You're looking toward Gratz as you sit right along that county border of Henry and also Owen County. I'm picking up some rain at this moment. Owen 10, you're on the way. You know, look for a little bit more rain. Shelbyville uh, will be next in line, too. If you see at the bottom of your screen, here comes a shower about to roll right over you guys as you sit down toward the east or west, rather, across 64. So, really, the bulk of it stays to the northwest until we start to see some. I'll sprout up later on this afternoon. There's the bulk of it. Look at that. And that's some good rain. This is exactly, exactly what we want. We don't really want the thunderstorms in terms of severe weather. If you do get thunderstorms today, I believe it's just more beneficial rain. Uh, but we'll still see those temperatures take a dive today, about 5 to 10 degrees below where we have been the past several days. When you're starting off in the 70s, you know there is something on the way. And here comes some showers and thunderstorms with that front. This is your first front we've been talking about. Your second front. Later on this week, off into the weekend, scattered showers and thunderstorms. No real severe weather threat today. Can we rule out a stray cell? Can't rule it out. But for the most part, this is just going to be some beneficial rain or rainy Wednesday in store. Two fronts, first one now, second one towards your weekend. And once that moves through, you talk about a nice feel in the air. It's a Halloween feel. And what I mean by that is once you get toward late October, you're talking temperatures with highs in the 60s. You heard me right. So if the Halloween feel is in the forecast, Watch this as we go towards your weekend. Look at that, Saturday and Sunday. Woo, 68, 69 degrees. You got to love that. Your best chances of rain are today, early tomorrow morning, and then on Saturday, unfortunately. I know Saturday we have a lot of events going on, plenty of events happening. So just keep in mind, if you have anything, 5Ks during the morning, it's going to be on the cool side, 54 degrees. You will have a couple of showers here and there, too. And that goes through the day, too. Christ the King has their Oktoberfest. In September, but you know what? It's always in September. <laughs> it's always in September, so <laughs> there you go. That's a huge event. Another one is the Barbecue Festival down in Danville. That's another big event. 
Apple Festival going on in Georgia. I mean, we have so many that All we've talked kinds about. of things. Yes. But now, Micah, for weeks you've been claiming that even when we have gotten some showers here and there, that it never rains on never. your yard. Are you happy it now? Knows what I, it knows what I do for a living, okay? It <laughs> but knows. this time, maybe your yard. Hopefully. We'll All see. All right. Well, each morning we bring you weather and traffic together. Here's Officer Don with a look at what's happening on the roads. All right. I don't think. Hello. Oh, yeah. Am I here? Oh, okay, I'm here. Good. Hey, no wrecks right now. Traffic looks good on the circle in the interstate. Just check 64 east and westbound, and we're trouble-free with no problems report coming in from Clark County. Let's get a look outside right now, and we'll show you what's happening as you plan to head out the door for work or school this morning. So far, so good uh, on Main and Vine. Good shot there of what we're dealing with toward downtown. On our Waze map, there's really nothing major happening. We've got live drivers on the way in on the circle reporting normal traffic flow. Uh, also, inbound Richmond notes may just Past Man of War, uh, headed toward downtown at the moment. And on the north side of town, checked out Newtown Pike, North Broadway, and Russell Cave. No problems. Now back to you. All right, like that shot uh, downtown there looked uh, good. Uh, Very pretty folks shot. Maybe yes. heading out for a morning stroll uh, here as we have uh, nice conditions out there this morning. Coming up on 611, and it's terrific to have you along with us here on this Wednesday. More news on the way. A plane catches fire while waiting to take off from the Las Vegas airport. The latest on the investigation in three minutes. Also, we'll have details on a shakeup at Macy's, which is now planning to close dozens of its stores. What we know about that coming up on. WKYT. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT and welcome in on your Wednesday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. In today for Rebecca Smith. Hump Day, we're already there. September 9th, and it's 631 right now. The latest on Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis, who is now free from jail, but has given, been given an ultimatum by a federal judge. Disturbing details about a violent crime in Lexington, where police say a woman throwing a birthday party was raped. And an update on an iconic restaurant in southern Kentucky that is turning a temporary spot. Now it turns out into a permanent location. Your showers already to the west and northwest. That's out ahead of our front and our front and the big rain back toward the west. And you can see that heading out of direction. It's going to take some time, but we'll really get into that forecast because we're looking at showers and thunderstorms today. I'll show you that timing coming up. And here's the latest from WKYT News. After spending six days in jail this morning, Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis is a free woman. Federal Judge David Bunning lifted the contempt of court charge against Davis, but not without putting a strict order in place. This morning, the question is, will Davis comply? WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk this morning with the latest on all of that. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. The one condition the judge gave Kim Davis when he ordered her release from jail was that she must not interfere with her deputy clerks who are issuing marriage licenses. Now we are still waiting to see whether she will obey the judge's order. Now District Judge David Bunning said he made the decision to free her six days after she was locked up because her office has been issuing marriage licenses to gay and straight couples. When the Rowan County clerk walked out of the Carter County Detention Center yesterday afternoon, she received a thunderous welcome from hundreds of her supporters. Also in the crowd, two presidential candidates, Mike Huckabee and Ted Cruz. It took Davis about a minute to choke back her emotions, but when she did start speaking, it appeared to be through tears. You are a strong people. We serve a living God who knows exactly where each and every one of us is at. Just keep on pressing. Don't let down because he is here. And he's worthy, he's worthy. I am willing to spend the next eight years in the White House leading this country, but I want you to know I'm willing to spend the next eight years in jail, but I'm not willing to spend one day under the tyranny of people who believe they can take our freedom and conscience away. Davis will return to her office this week. In her absence, clerks have been issuing marriage licenses without her name on them. Davis has said from the start that is something that would help her have a clear conscience when issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. The judge says if Davis violates a court order and interferes with her clerks, appropriate sanctions will be considered. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. 
Mark, thank you. It wasn't just Republican presidential candidates who were in Carter County for yesterday's pro Davis rally. Republican gubernatorial candidate for governor Matt Bevan was also there. He shared this picture of him posing with Davis and her husband. Bevan has been outspoken about this case from the beginning, saying that Davis did nothing wrong. The reality is, what law did she break? I would, I would challenge anyone to state that. Well, Bevan is running against Democratic Attorney General Jack Conway. Conway has said that no one should be able to defy a federal judge's order. Governor Steve Bashir again said he will not be calling a special legislative session to deal with marriage license issues. He said it would be a waste of taxpayer money, since all but three of Kentucky's county clerks are complying with the law. A special session costs taxpayers around $60,000 a day. Two years ago, the Kentucky legislature passed a religious freedom law to make sure government action does not interfere with religious beliefs protected by the First Amendment. But the governor said he does not think it allows a public official to avoid doing their job. And for more coverage of the Kim Davis case, you can go to our web channel, WKYT.com. New this morning, a man is in jail accused of raping a woman who was throwing a birthday party in Lexington. Keeper Jones is charged with rape and several other charges. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is tracking the investigation and has the latest now from police headquarters. Good morning, Michelle. Yes, Kebra Jones was arrested yesterday after police say he raped a woman following a birthday party. Now, according to an arrest citation, the victim hosted a birthday party on August 30th at Pinebrook Apartments on Takes Creek Road. Her friend's boyfriend, Kebra Jones, was in attendance. Police say after the party, Jones stole $1,400 cash from the victim's wallet, which was located in the office of the apartment complex. The citation says Jones then went to the victim's apartment. The victim let Jones in, believing he'd had an argument with her friend. Now, after entering the apartment, police say Jones then raped the woman. According to court documents, the victim had met Jones a few times prior, but only when Jones was with her friend. Now, Jones is set to be arraigned later today. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Michelle, thank you. We will be in a Laurel County courtroom today when two people accused of abusing an infant face a judge. The child's mother, Bessie Sizemore, and cousin, Michael Henson, are charged with child abuse. Police say Sizemore's infant is temporarily blind from the abuse. The baby also had a broken rib and head trauma. Sizemore and Henson will be arraigned later today. The time now is 6.37 on WKYT This Morning. A man's attempt to avoid going to jail backfired when he gave a cop an ID of a wanted man. Richmond police say they asked to see Travis Tipton's driver's license. He gave them his cousin's license to apparently try to hide his identity. But Tipton's cousin had a warrant out, so police arrested Tipton. And once at the jail, police realized that Tipton had some warrants of his own. We're tracking a rather strange case out of Bath County this morning. Fish and wildlife officials are trying to track down an escaped monkey. State police tell us someone reported seeing the roaming monkey last night along the old state road. Now the primate rescue center in Nicholasville tells us the monkey, a long-tailed macaque like the one seen here, was likely someone's pet. They've put out a humane trap to try and catch the monkey. Once it's caught, it will go to the primate rescue center. All right. So if you see them out there. It would be hard to miss. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you are not seeing things. It would not be hard to miss there. Well, new this morning, Kentucky Utilities is warning about a telephone scam. Berea Online says the scammer is claiming to be a Kentucky Utilities employee and is asking that you pay your bill over the phone. If you refuse to pay, police say the scammer then threatens to cut off your electricity. KU says this is all just a scam, and if you get a call like this, give them a call. Police at two of the state's largest universities will soon be equipped with body cameras. The University of Louisville bought 50 cameras and hopes to have officers wearing them by the end of the month. University of Kentucky patrol officers started wearing body cameras in July. 48 cameras were purchased for UK for roughly $38,000. The move is a pattern seen nationwide following several controversial incidents involving officers. 
Well, months after it burned down, a popular Laurel County restaurant is gaining fame in a new location. They were just trying it out at first. Weaver's Hot Dogs was destroyed in a February fire after nearly 75 years in business in downtown London. And while the Weaver family is rebuilding its Main Street store, they set up a new restaurant out at the London Corbin Airport. The family says they now plan to keep the new location open even after the old place is rebuilt. And that should be finished sometime next year. Business is good, and they, they're enjoying being out there at the airport. So they some... can have those two locations yeah. now. And so. uh, travelers have something to eat as they're stopping by London Corbin. That's good. <laughs> well, let's check to see how traffic is moving for you this morning. Our time coming up on 640. Let's go to Officer Don and check on live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Checking all of our construction zones this morning. Lee's Town Road, uh, Vercells Road, the Circle, Clays Mill Road. Everything is quiet. No major issues to deal with just yet, so we're letting you know that. Now, on the inner and outer loops of the Circle approaching Nicholasville Road, we have some debris in the roadway. It looks like tire tread blocking part of the right lane to give you the update on. Getting a live look downtown right now. Normal traffic flow there on our Waze map. Uh, nothing major popping up just yet. Uh, we can see the interstate looks good. Live drivers on the way in around the Circle, inbound Richmond Road. Also, Nicholasville passed Man of War. Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you very much. Hump Day on WKYT, and the hump came a little early this week for some. With uh, hey, I'm <laughs> all Labor for that. Day we could do this every week. Yeah, right. I, I don't think employers would go for it, but right. it's, it's a nice one. Nice short week. All right, uh, 640 now on WKYT this morning. Well, she's only 17, but this Kentucky team is ready to take on some big competition this weekend. We'll catch up with Miss Kentucky as she prepares for the Miss America pageant coming up after weather. Stephen Colbert makes his debut as host of The Late Show to a standing ovation. I'm Don Champion outside the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York City with a look back at his hilarious first show coming up. Well, we have a lot going on this weekend and also throughout the work week, too. A lot of festivals picking up. You know what's picking up? Some rain. How will that affect your plans in the upcoming days? We'll have that coming up next.